Give y'all the view real quick. We about to, about to hop on live with my man Strack. What up, baby boy? What it do? What it do? What it do? Yes, God. Yes, God. Hold on, I gotta add my bro back on here. Haru, what's up, baby? Where my dog at? I can get to this interview. Get to this interview real quick. Gotta go tap in with my dog, Shane. Saying, yo, you are weak. Yo, I this. How was it cool? Why your white is? How was it cool? Why don't take? Oh, here you go. Boom. The family. Metcha Ine. Metcha Ine. What's up, bro? I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you too, yo. I've been waiting to do this with you, yo. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think last time we tried to do it, you was in season, though. Yeah. Yeah, bro, I was ripping running out in Japan. Yeah, how'd that jump? We, we, we locked in. We locked in, though. Yeah. How y'all finish up this year? Uh, We did pretty well, honestly, for... You know, for it being the first year for uh, me and David and the other two guys that we was with, um, we lost two games to the same team, literally. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was pretty tough, but I mean, I, I think we I think we get them, you know, get them next time around, you know. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. So originally, I asked you like some. Some basic question, but since we on live, we can go through some some deeper stuff, man. Cause yeah. you're a pretty interesting individual. You feel me? So, for sure. For sure. Well, let's talk about what you think that week when you heard that I had to file you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my dog, my dog, bringing up the archives. Uh, <laughs> Dang, I don't know, bro. I mean, that week I was just like, yeah. I mean, honestly, though, it was it was just like it was like any other week. Like I wasn't, you know, I was just like uh, playing against my dog this week. I mean, you know, I was just thinking to myself like it it ain't gonna be no different, you know. That's pretty, yeah. That's that's pretty much it. And you know, we just got out there, and you know, I made some plays. You made some plays, and that's that's what it was. Hey, that joke was hilarious, though. <laughs> like, he was like, I was like, yeah, I'm about to be pressing there the whole game. The whole game. Yeah, I mean, bro. First jump, you did a, um, I knew this jump was going to be a hard game. I was like, yo, this is going to be the hardest game this year. He came off the line. I think it was a run play, but you tried to show me you was fast. <laughs> <laughs> I ran all the way to the like end zone. I'm like, yo, come on, yo. Like, I'm like, yo, his speed, like, yo, this jump off the rip is like, you feel me? Like, this jump, you could feel it. I was like, yo, this crazy. Yes, was, God. Speed right here. Yeah. So I had to make sure I, throughout the game, I was like, you cannot miss if you jam it. <laughs> you cannot miss. Nah, uh, bro. Yeah, that's crazy, yo. Yeah. Nah, but yeah, that was fun. So I did that um whole process go for you like throughout your scouting. Um <clears throat> should I mean after um after Shepherd, uh dang what so I trained trained up R one for like like a month. Basically, uh, it was crazy. What's crazy is we didn't even have a pro day. 
um, I think our pro day had got canceled because COVID, COVID had happened. So literally right after I finished training, like I was scrambling, you know, like I was trying to figure out where I was about to do the pro day yet. And, uh, you know, thank God I ended up getting in the, uh, I ended up getting in the Marshalls. So I literally drove up to Marshall like the night before. And I was just like, you know, I ain't have no clue how that joint was going to go. But, I mean, I was ready for real. So, you know, I just got up there and, you know, I just did what I had to do. And, I mean, shit, everything turned out uh, good. Um, I talked to a few teams and stuff, like, right after the camp. I, it was crazy. I, I, I talked to um, to the Chargers. They was, like, one of the first teams I, uh, I spoke with after. I talked to them for probably, like, like 30 minutes after the camp. Like, I'm thinking in my head, like, man, I'm about to go to, I'm about to, go to L.A. Chargers. Da, da, da. So I get back to the crib. My agent hit me. He, like, he like yo, like, uh, I talked to some of these teams. Then a lot of other teams started calling me for real. Um, Shit, I, I even talked to a few teams at Shepard for real that came up there because, I mean, we had <clears throat> we had a few people that uh, I guess that was, like, prospects, me, our running back. They was uh they was real big on our quarterback Tyson. So I mean they was coming for him. Shit, it was only his what like sophomore year, I believe. So Yeah. I, mean, I remember him too. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he 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 cre- I mean shit, he in the uh he in the uh, the Reese's bowl. He got the invite and he going to the combine. So I mean Yeah. They already like that. He 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 the main reason why I got with, you know, why I even got shot right there. Shit, he threw me he threw me seventeen touchdowns. So yeah. yeah. So a lot of people don't know though. Before, like you um went to Shepherd, like then you you only played one year, didn't you at Mom? Uh, I played my freshman year at Mom, and I played like ten percent of my sophomore year, and then I ended up like leaving there due to some stuff that I could kind of control, but it was just like. I just felt like it wasn't, you know, the right situation for me. So I had to go in and get up out of there for real. Yeah. And um, where other schools did you go to before you got to Shepherd? Uh, I was at Bowie. I was at Bowie for a year. Um, uh, man, that was like, you know, a crazy uphill battle at Bowie, but stuff kind of didn't work out there. And I just had to, you know, just test the waters. Luckily, I had some guys over at Shepherd. And, uh, you know, they pretty much, they looked out for me. They, you know, welcomed me, welcomed me into the family. And I just worked. I mean, it was, bro, my college career was literally, it was crazy. It was all over the place. But, um, yeah, after I left Bowie, I went to Shepherd, and I had to sit out. Like, I couldn't even play because um, it was like a transfer rule that they had in effect. But, um, yeah, like, I sat out my first year at Shepherd, but, I practiced literally the whole season, so I was just out there, just scout team, just dogging them boys. Like, yeah. I mean, I do, but that next that next year at Shepherd, which was my last year, like I mean, shit, like the coaches, everybody already, you know, they knew for real, like what I could do. So, I mean, after that, it was just, you know, I just had to kind of get the results because I mean, I had already put the work in, so that's pretty much all it was. The crazy part is, I remember it too, cause I got to play y'all uh, in both conferences, like before y'all shit. So I, I played y'all in the MEC when I was at Glenville, and I I remember I was starting, and you was on the sideline, you was talking <laughs> shit, and like <laughs> shit, and I'm like, yo, he ain't, not even, yo, I'm like, yo, he not even playing, like, and then I got to play you at Millersville, but the craziest thing I remember was we had just wrapped up the game. And I think y'all, like, I'm talking to you, you know, um, who else? Some people from Baltimore, some people from PG that came up, all that. So we talking after the game and stuff. Then I see you go grab your cleats and working out after the game. I'm like, yo, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> we just played the game or whatever. But because he can't play or whatever, he's still, you know, he getting his work. And that was crazy to me. Like, I really was like, all right, yo, he about his business. You feel me? Got you. Yeah, that was crazy, man. That was crazy. So, for 
like a youngin, like somebody trying to come up, you know, from wherever, Maryland, anywhere. What's some advice if they go D2 you would give them? Hmm. I mean, honestly, you know, just you got to, you know, keep that drive. I mean, going going D2, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, everybody want to go, you know, the D1 route, but, you know, everybody go through, you know, different obstacles and trials and tribulations and, you know, the ball don't always fall in your court. So, I mean, if you end up going D2, I mean, you know, I was told, you know, like if you're talented, you know, they'll find you. And, I mean, that's that's the truth, you know. Like, I don't it's, – it's really no better way to say it. Like, I mean, if you got talent, you know, like it's, it's recruiters out here, scouts, like they will find you. You know, you just got to, you know, put the work in and, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, like if, if you want to ball professionally, you know, like – and that's that's the good thing about, like – today's you know the, like the game is is evolving i mean you got all these different leagues you got the xfl you got cfl you got the usfl i mean you got these fan control leagues you got arena i mean like it's so many different platforms you know that that they that they putting out you know nowadays and you know it's people from all around the world like even different countries that's you know that's getting opportunities to show what they can do on the field so i mean you know, my advice to somebody going D2, you know, is just, you know, don't give up, you know, because you might think like, oh, shit, like, you know, I'm not at a D1 school, so I don't got a chance. But, I mean, like, that's not the truth. And, you know, I know I just mentioned my quarterback, for instance, like D2 quarterback, like he in a Reese's Bowl. He got an invite to the combine. So, I mean, it can be done, you know. All you got to do is, you know, you just got a ball. Like, you put the work in, they will find you. I mean, that's, you know, that's that's all it is, you know, just keep God first and just put the work in. Yeah. So, briefly, you were with Arizona. How was that process? Oh, uh, man, that, I'm not even going to lie. It was like, it felt like heaven. Like, I don't even, it's, it was, it was probably like the craziest experience. Like, I remember, I remember, um waiting like I was I was in a car with my god brother we was driving around this was draft day and it was so crazy because bro I talked to 16 teams on the phone like they either call or text and like I was riding around and um we had stopped at uh this soul food place and it was getting towards like the end of I think it was like the sixth or seventh round and Chargers had two picks left so I'm looking like I'm I'm praying like I mean shit like you know, I talked to them, boom, boom. You know, they was telling me all this stuff. And so I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's a chance they could pick me. I mean, they, they said they liked me when they saw me at Marshall. So, you know, I'm thinking, like, it might be a chance that I go there. So, end of the seventh round, we leaving the soul food place, driving back. Um, I still ain't heard nothing yet. So, I literally got, like, five minutes from my house in, uh, in Maryland. And literally, like, my agent called me and he just like, he just saying some stuff about like, you know, making my mom proud and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, stop beating around the bush. Like, you know, what's going on? Boom, boom. He like, you are Arizona Cardinals. So I'm just like, damn, I'm like, for real. Like, I thought he was playing. Like, I'm like, I'm like, dang. He like, uh, he like, yeah, man. Like they, they just called me. They sent him the contract over, boom, boom. And, you know, sign it. And, and get it back to me. I'm going to get to them. And next thing I know, Arizona number calling me. And um, they just like, yeah, you know, welcome. You know, we glad to have you. Heard a lot of good stuff. Boom, boom. And then it just went from there. Next thing I know, like like a day later, I had an iPad and a, and a notebook come in the mail. And I was like, dang, like I'm really on a Cardinals. It was crazy, bro. It was, it was, it was a crazy experience. Like I don't even – it's really hard to explain. And then, like, uh, it was it was COVID. It was COVID during the time, too. So, like, once, um like, we – I had the iPad in a book. We were studying for, like, probably, like, a week or two. And I had met, like, all the guys and stuff like that over Zoom, like, D-Hop, C-Kirk, all them guys. Um, sheesh. I actually went out – before before we actually went out to uh, – because camp was about to start, I actually – I went to L.A. and I was just 
I was training with a few of the guys out at UCLA. Uh, so I mean, bro, it was it was a crazy experience, bro. Like, I just could, I ain't even I literally just didn't even it ain't even feel like it was right. But I mean, I just would think to myself like shit. Like I I've been working out forever. I've been I've been doing this stuff forever. So it's just like, you know, it's paying off. But um, shit, we got the uh to, we got the Arizona to like to the facility and stuff. And, I mean, it was bro, it was like heaven, bro. Like. Uh, cafeteria, like literally anything you want to eat, you know, they, they ask you, you know, like, oh, like you got allergies or any preferences, like whatever you want, they got in there, like protein, you know, snacks, I mean, just anything. So like, I mean, shit, I mean, it was, it was, it was an amazing experience, bro. Like, shit, I mean, who knows, bro, COVID wouldn't have happened and yeah, I think it had a lot more success during that process. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, because I got to play against you personally. So I, I got to feel like how it feels to be a DB in that position covering somebody like yourself. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, bro, like COVID was just like that one, you know, that, that one obstacle. Um. You know that I had to get over because I mean I was I mean it was it was tough it, it wasn't easy you know it wasn't easy because you just like you know I was just thinking you know you put all the work in everything right and it's just like you know you still like nothing still isn't guaranteed you know so you just gotta you know keep a positive mindset and you know just continue to just try to get one percent better every day and that's that's the hard part cause it's just like. You know, you working, you you doing all this stuff every day. You know, you sacrificing time with family. You know, time where you could be, you know, working a job, making money. You know, there's a lot of other stuff you could be doing, but you just like, you know, I got to do this, you know, because I believe in this and that's what I want to do. So that was like the hardest part for me. So I just tried to, you know, I tried to stay, um, I tried to stay as close to the game as possible. So like, you know, I was I was at the gym with it. You know, if I was training or personal training just so I could just make sure like like yo I'm right here with it like so that's pretty much what it was yeah, now, the next thing I'm gonna ask you I think this is a little bit after you got removed from the Cardinals yeah. you moved out to LA right yeah. training yeah. and everything so yeah. how long was it before, like, you, you got that call for the league you're in now? Oh, um, shit, I was in L.A. What happened? I was right. I was in L.A. I stayed in L.A. for, like, seven months. Uh, just training, you know, just trying to stay right. I actually, before, before I moved, uh, before I went to Japan, I was in, um, I went up to Canada that next year, 2021. It's so crazy. Like, it's 2023 right now. Time will be flying, bro. Like, but so right after right after I got released from the Cardinals, I stayed in L.A. And then I left that next year, and I went up to, to Canada to camp with the B.C. Lions. And back, it, it, honestly, I had a good camp. I was, I was surprised that I got cut. Like, it was crazy. It was, it was a lot of guys that was like, that was that was confused. Like I was, I, I I had no clue I was about to get cut. You know, I, I thought I was doing a good job. I mean, I I was, you know, team my my team my team reps and stuff was, was pretty decent. But like ones, I didn't lose no ones, and I was going against the starting corners, bro. It was crazy. But I mean, it's just you know every everything got is you know the politics that come with it. So I mean, I left from Canada, twenty twenty one. And wait, 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 before you leave that, do they they have the similar like the American rules and all that too? Like you can only have a certain amount of Americans. Yeah. Right? Yep. yep. Yeah. Um I believe it's like six or seven Americans. Uh or actually it might be like one or two per scale. It might be three per scale group, I believe. 
So I mean, yeah, it was, bro. It was honestly, it was, it was a lot going in. Like, I mean, like I said, every league got politics, and it's just a lot to come with it. But I, I believe Canada was three foreigners per scale group because the Canadians they gotta like um, it gotta be a certain amount of Canadians like on the field at you know at once. So that was another thing. They don't want you taking over the leagues. That's why. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So after that, that's when you um went to Japan, though. Yeah. So after that, I hit like this. I hit this gray area. So I was um I was training for a while, and out of nowhere, like, like uh, the beginning of 2022. I think it was like February or March. This dude from this dude from the league hit me up, and he was like, uh, he was like, bro, like, what what you think about you know playing football in Japan and whatnot? I was like, uh, I was like, I didn't even know they had football out there. So he uh he sent he sent me league and everything, and I was looking at it. I was like, man, this this look legit. And I'm like, you know, mind you, like the team that he uh the team that had reached out like. You know, they needed they needed a receiver and a quarterback. And I'm like, I'm like, shit, like, man, me, you know, me and my boy DP, we be throwing, like, every day. I mean, you know, if, if anybody got chemistry, you know, it's, it's – uh, I think he was just finishing up, like, arena ball or something like that. And uh, I kind of just, you know, threw the alley. And the dude was just like – so he was, he was just – he was more he was excited, you know, to you know, to to be able to talk to us and recruit us and everything like that. It was it was crazy though because they they knew like everything about us. Like they had been watching film, like watching social media, like they it was crazy, like they knew everything. So I mean, yeah, it goes to show you like man, that's another thing. That's the power of these platforms. Like you were saying earlier about guys going D two. Posting workouts, posting routes, post that stuff on social media because you never know who's watching. But I mean, yeah, after that, um, it took a while. It took a while for me to get out to like Japan though, because we had to get like uh visas and a bunch of other stuff. But once we got all that straightened out, we was out there and like uh, I think we went like the end of June and you know we was working. It was just it was like clockwork. We was back on. So what would you say your biggest adjustment um, moving over there was? Uh, I think I think the biggest uh, biggest adjustment I had to make was was like the food for like the first month and a half because like I ain't know where nothing was at, bro. Like my house, like where I live at, is like it's it's literally like right in the middle of everything. But when I tell you like. Bro, I ain't. I can't read Japanese, bro. I ain't. It, it's so hard. Like, I'm talking about. I just would be walking. I'm going in stores, just picking up stuff. I don't know what stuff is. I'm like, man. It, it took me like a month and a half to adjust to like the food, just eating and stuff. Like, I, I think I lost like, I think I lost like five, six pounds or something like that. Yeah. And, and that was. It was it was tough, but I mean, after, after that month and a half, I was good though. Like, I was I was adjusted, you know. I was I was cooking. I had I had everything I needed. I mean, I was straight. That's good, man. Yeah. But before we leave, give us some tips on speed. How could we get our speed as fast as yours? Yeah. <laughs> shit, I mean, shit. I ain't, ugh, I ain't even running right now. I'm lifting right now, but. Speed. Uh, what's my tips for speed? Like somebody starting at the beginning, like just freshman year in high school, they trying to get faster. They want to be elite. Ooh, want to get fast and you want to be elite? I would say hills. Hills. Number one. Number two. You gotta run. You gotta run every day. That was something that 
I feel like that helped me a lot. Like when I first started, you know, learning how to run, that's another thing, actually knowing how to run. But but back to this, you you got to put the effort in. You know, you got to run every day. You know, you got to, you know, study, study the technique, study, you know, the forms of running, you know, like invest in a coach, maybe somebody that, you know, that you believe in, that you, you know, trust, you know, that can teach you the right mechanics that you need in order to be able to sprint fast. Because that's another thing, like a lot of people just don't know how to run. So, um, yeah, I think that's, those are the most three important things, you know, like, Number one is just effort, you know, just actually running. Number two is, you know, understanding how to run. And number three is just, you know, investing in yourself. You know, and if that's, like I said, you know, getting that coach or that trainer, that person that you trust, you know, to, you know, to, you know, instill some time in you. you know, like I had, I had Coach Pop, you know, I had Chris from R1, Quez, I had all them, you know, I had all them guys, like, they was, they was making sure I was doing, like, everything right, because that's the thing, like, I was fast, but, you know, I got way faster, you know, with, with their help, you know, without them, I probably wouldn't have been as fast, I probably, you know, wouldn't have got a shot, because the main reason I got to the car was that 40 that I ran, so, got shouts to those guys, but, yeah, man, like, I think those three things, you know, just, Effort, understanding, you know, how to run and just, you know, investing in yourself. I think those are three things that, you know, anybody got to know, you know, in order to become elite, you know. Yes, sir. Well, hey, I appreciate you there for taking out time. And, hey, make sure you save it on YouTube, too, for the people that missed it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you, though. All right, brother. All right, fam. I'm going to holler at you. For sure.